he delivers, he heals, and he sets free, and he opens doors, and turns things around. He's a God that breaks through. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't know what's stopping you tonight. Hallelujah. Or what's stopping your praise in the house of God tonight. Hallelujah. But you need to lay that down and lay that to the side. Hallelujah. And focus in on your God. Hallelujah. Nothing should be able to stop you from giving your God glory. Nothing should be able to stop you from giving your God praise. Hallelujah. The reason you're breathing is because of him. The reason you got strength in your body is because of him. The reason you're able to pay them bills. Come on. Got a roof over your head food on your table come on we got to go back home with this come on somebody hey all of that is because of him hallelujah I got another day because of him hallelujah so I'm thankful hallelujah and I give him praise hallelujah you know people think that's a cliche hallelujah but somebody don't have what you have the stuff that you take for granted and you asking for most somebody don't even have the least of that Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we got to be thankful. Hallelujah. God is teaching to be, be me to be thankful and to me to be humble. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thankful for what he has given me. Thanks for all that he has done for me. And thank him for what he's about to do in my life. Hallelujah. The God, we serve a God that is unstoppable. Hallelujah. Glory to God telling you got to be thankful thankful the bible says in everything give thanks hallelujah hallelujah let us bow our head for a word of prayer father god in the name of jesus i just count it an honor and a privilege to come before your people tonight lord god father i decrease and i want you to increase on the inside of me lord god i thank you lord god that the word that i speak tonight they are spirit and they are life and they come alive in your people to life tonight that their lives will forever be changed lord god i thank you father god and i praise you lord god i ask you to speak through my uh speak through my mouth tonight lord god i ask you to think through my mind tonight lord god none of me all of you lord god i am totally yielded it to you a yielded vessel for your glory and honor and I just thank you father and I just praise you for it tonight in Jesus name amen I want you to open your Bibles to the book of first Peter chapter 5 amen glory to God just we're asking you to keep our pastor and first family in prayer amen you know it's time for promise to go to school hallelujah glory to God amen season of transition for her and the entire first family amen so we got to keep our pastor in prayer hallelujah Glory, that's his girl. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. That's a daddy's girl. From baby on up. Anybody been here when she was a baby? Amen. Who was rolling with her? The pastor. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. So that 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 daddy daughter separation. Amen. We got to pray for our pastor. Hallelujah. Hope you're looking. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We got your back. We got your back, Pastor. Amen. Amen. It's a season of change for them, season of transition for them. Amen. So we just want to keep them in prayer. But we invite you back. He'll be not back Sunday, but next week, Wednesday, he's going to be back. Glory to God. In the pulpit. And amen. We know when he comes back, he comes back fueled and recharged and ready to run. So amen. Stay ready. Stay ready. Stay ready. Everybody found the first Peter chapter five, starting at verse number eight. Looking at King James Version, it says, be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may desire. But it says, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Same scripture from the uh, New American Standard Bible. It says this, be sober spirit, be on the alert. Did she get it from the, um, yeah, no, don't have that one. That's okay. I'll read it. It says, be of sober spirit, be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. That's the enemy's assignment. He's going about seeking whom he may devour. Then it says, but resist him. God is talking to us. We need to resist him. Firm in your faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. You are not the only one going through. That's what that scripture is letting us know. You're not the only one under attack. You're not the only one that got fiery darts being thrown at them. Is that anybody tonight? You are not the only one. Glory to God. 
Other people, let me, I wrote this down. It says, even though there may be some who have said, we have tried and failed. We have tried and lost everything we had. We have tried and that member of our family died. There are others like us who say, we tried it and it worked. Y'all hearing me tonight? We tried the word and it worked. Because you got other people out there saying it doesn't work. I don't care what you do. If I tried it, it didn't. How many people know people like that? I tried God, it didn't work. What God did they try? Glory to God. I don't know what God did they try. Some people say they tried it, it didn't work, but they're not like us. We tried it and we see that God show up. We saw that God uh, shows out on our behalf. We see that God comes through for us, glory to God. So we're not going to join in with the other people that don't know God like that. But we're going to stand fixed and firm on the word of God, and we will not let go. God dealt with me by standing my ground. Too many people waver in their commitment to God and in their faith. When God has spoken a word over your life, you cannot waver. You cannot give in. You cannot cave in. You cannot quit. God says, stand your ground, glory to God. You know when, it, when, when God speaks the word The enemy comes to try to steal the word That was sown in your heart That is his assignment But you got to stand fixed and firm On what God has spoken unto you Has God said anything to you in the house of God Anything to you in your personal prayer time Well God saying stand your ground Maybe some people in here who've got negative reports. Maybe some people in here, before they came, they got some bills in the mail. Or maybe you got some phone calls or things of that nature. No matter what circumstances or things that are going on that are coming at you. Come on now. God says he needs you to stand your ground. Be sober. Be vigilant for your adversary. The devil as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. That means there are some people out there that are able to be devoured. That are some people that cave in, they give up, and they quit too soon. And it's like when you're right on the verge of breakthrough, when you're right on the verge of this thing turning around, you throw in the towel. But God's saying he needs you to stand your ground tonight. Not to give up. Not to cave in. Don't give up on your marriage. Don't fall prey to what the doctor has said, that it's over for you and God can't do anything for you. Don't fall prey to my, my situation cannot turn around. That's a lot from the devil. We serve a God who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all we dare ask or think according to the power working on the inside of us. Somebody needs to stand in here tonight. Somebody needs to not give up. Somebody needs to not quit or cave in glory to God. See, when, you, when, when you're doing that, you look, you got to be looking at the wrong thing. You cannot be looking in the word and seeing what God says. Because when you read the word, it brings comfort. When you read the word, it brings strength. And when you read the word, it brings encouragement, glory to God. You got to be looking at other things. Maybe you're watching too much empire. Okay. Too, too, too much empire. Too, too much scandal and uh, all them other things that come on, uh, all them other stuff that come on. You're watching too much of that, and you're allowing that stuff to infiltrate. How, how does the negativity come in? It comes through your eye gates. It comes through your ear gates. All them negative messages. And then when you begin to meditate on those things other than on the word of God, you begin to lose hope. You begin to lose hope that God can do it for you. That God can turn it around. That God can open the door for you. You begin to lose hope. But God says he needs you to stand your ground tonight. He needs you not to give up. He needs you not to cave in. He needs you not to quit. Because he needs you to be the example in the world of what God will do through somebody that just trusts him and believe his word. Come on, somebody. Anybody want to be the example tonight? Hallelujah. I got some people who don't want to be the example. What church am I in tonight? Glory to God. Did y'all cave in and quit before y'all got here? Glory to God. Hallelujah. So y'all got to get excited about something, about what God is doing. Glory to God. We say the confession every Sunday, every Wednesday. And it's not just words that should come out of your mouth, but you should mean it from your heart. Glory to God. Instantaneous healings. Instantaneous deliverances. Nobody got that. Okay, praise God. I got to keep on moving. Hallelujah. God said he needs some people that's going to stand their ground. Hallelujah. Not give up. Hallelujah. 
I'm telling you, I'm so I'm just so focused on what God is speaking to my heart now that I will not let go of it because he has proven himself time and time again. If you have seen God do anything in your life one time, if he did it once, he can do it again. One time. Try him and see. That's the thing. You got to put your trust and your confidence in him. Has he healed your body? Has he provided for you? Has he opened doors for you? I remember when I first got here on the island. I mean, I had money in my, a little money in my bank account. But after a while, how many people know money run out? Especially if you ain't got no inflow. If all is outflow, you're going to get in some trouble. Glory to God. So um, I couldn't find a job or anything. But God in those situations, there were times, I'm going to tell you this, there were times that we, we didn't have the amount of food we needed, glory to God. And it became a situation between when Kenneth was here, him eating and me eating. And, I, you know, of course I'm going to get the food to my son, glory to God. But God always made a way. Amen. Groceries left at my door. Or somebody in the church say, I'm going here, would you like something? Now, sometimes I would act in pride. No, I'm all right. No, my belly. <laughs> you better get there. Sometimes I was operating in pride, but a lot of times I thought, oh, yes, praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Glory to God. But God has shown me that he will do what he said he would do as long as you stand on that word. I'm telling you, as long as you never give up. Glory to God. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 10. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody got to stand their ground. Somebody's been falling prey to the enemy and to the enemy's devices. It's time to step up to the plate in here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6, 10 says this. Let me see where it says it at. <laughs> it says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It says, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand. What's the next verse? Stand. Now that word stand in this scripture is a military position. It's a military, um, it's a military term. And it means holding your position. God needs you to hold your position. Regard, regardless of the opposition that may be coming up against you. Regardless of the words that you are healing. Do you know the, 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 the battlefield is in your mind? And what does the enemy do? He makes suggestions. He subtly makes suggestions. You're not going to be healed. God can't pay that bill. Your kids never coming to the Lord. Your marriage is always going to be messed up. He makes those subtle suggestions. And if you believe what he says, you have gotten off your position. You have gotten off the word of God. God said he needs you to hold your position. Hold your position on his word. Hold your position in the truth and to not let go. We are people that walk in victory according to the word of God. The Bible says that God has made us more than conqueror through him that loved us. Y'all hearing me tonight. So we can't open ourselves to be vulnerable to what, what the enemy is saying. Be vulnerable to the things that are going on around us. Remember the children of Israel. Let me check this out. God gave me this. The children of Israel. Remember that they, they were in bondage for 430 years. Then finally they were let out of bondage. They were going forth. And what happened? They were rejoicing and giving our praise. Because this is what the enemy do. You get a victory in your life. You're giving our praise. You get off of your position. You get off the word. you jumping and leaping and you know. Oh, that's praising God. Yes, we're supposed to do that. But you get off, you get out of your position. And what the enemy does right after you get your victory, he sends an, another attack your way. The children of Israel, they just got out of Egypt. They're walking along. They're giving out praise and rejoicing. And they're walking along. And what happened? Pharaoh starts to think, why did I let them people go? What was I thinking about? Get the horsemen. Get the army. And let's go after them. And what, what happens then? They walk and they doing their own thing. And who do they see coming up behind them? 
Pharaoh and his army. And what do they see in front of him? Them, the Red Sea. See, a lot of us been been coupled like that. Enemy coming up behind us, and we got obstacles in front of us, and we think that God can't do what he said he's going to do. A lot of people in here have been bombarded by, by, by things in their life continually. Things coming from the left hand, things coming from the right, right hand, things coming from and behind you. Everywhere you go, you're hearing negativity. Everywhere you go, something is happening in your life, and it's not happening according to the word. It's happening to come to all, all, all this negativity, bills and people and relationships and all this stuff, everything going wrong. But the thing is, what did God do in this situation? God made a way for them. The Bible says that he opened the Red Sea and they walked through on dry ground, glory to God. And the same water that he opened, he closed on their enemy. And they drowned in that same sea that brought forth deliverance to his children. We serve a powerful God, I'm telling you. Doesn't matter what it looks like. Doesn't matter what it's coming from. Glory to God. God said he needs you to stand firm and fixed on his word. The Bible tells us in the book of James chapter 4, you know I ain't going to go by that thing. It says resist him. And what does he do? He will flee. But a lot of times we're not resisting. We are giving in. And the thing is, he has convinced us that we don't have any power, that we don't have any authority. But the Bible says in the book of Colossians that Jesus spoiled principalities and powers, made a show of them openly, triumphing over him, over them. Isn't that? So if he triumphed, the Bible lets us know that we triumph, that we are victorious, that we're seated. The Bible tells us that we're seated with him in heavenly places. And then it says, Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. He has convinced us that we don't have any power. And we know that is a lie. Because if that is the truth, that means the blood doesn't mean anything. That means the cross doesn't mean anything. That means the crucifixion doesn't mean anything. But we know that Jesus, when he rose up, he rose up with all power in his hand. Come on, somebody. He took back the keys of death. He took back the keys of hell and the grave. Glory Glory to God. He has convinced us that we don't have any power when the whole time you stand it loaded. Able to triumph over any situation. Able to triumph over any situation. Any circumstance in your life. But he has convinced us that, 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 that word don't have any power. It's just black letters on a white page. That is all it is. I'm telling you, people need to know what the truth is. Amen. Word has power. It has efficacy. It has the power within itself to come to pass, glory to God. And God just needs a vessel that will speak it out of his mouth, glory to God. Proclaim what thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. I, w- I was meditating on the, um, the woman with the issue of blood because she held her position. She came out of her house knowing that it could mean death to her. She found herself in position behind Jesus and she wasn't trying to be his girl. Like, hey, Jesus, what's up with you? How you doing? You know, I got this issue. Her thing was, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I may, be, I, I shall be made whole. She held on to her position. That was her confession. The whole time, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And we know when she touched the hem of his garment, the Bible says virtue went out of his body. Where Jesus said, Jesus had to, wait a minute, what, what's going on here? You got tons of people around you. Everybody's thronging you, as the Bible says. Everybody pushing up against you. Now, it's like, okay, all these people touching you and nothing happened. But this woman who it was holding on to her position, if I may but touch the hem of his garment. I'm holding my position in this. She had heard about Jesus. She heard that he was a heel. If I may but touch the hem of his garment. She held her position. And Jesus, like, like, uh, turn, like, asking the disciple, who, 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 who touched me? Not just a normal touch. This, this was a different kind of touch. A touch of faith. Somebody touched me, glory to God. She held her position. I thought about blind Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus. The Bible says he sit, sat by the roadside begging. But when he heard that Jesus was coming, 
He cried out, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And when people were around him trying to shut him up, because see, y'all talk to too many people. Y'all let too many people know what God said and what God going to do and God going to turn my life around. And, God, and some of them people ain't in faith with you at time. They don't believe nothing you say. And they try to talk you out of what God has spoken to your life. And them people kept telling blind and burning man, shut up. Shut up. And the Bible said that he cried the more. Holding to his position. Holding to his position. See, that, that's what I'm talking about. I had to give some examples, glory to God. That's what I'm talking about. Holding to your position in God. What did God say to you? What word has he given you? That word has power. Remember the disciples. Jesus said, okay, come on. We're going to go to the other side. Right in the middle of that, a storm arose. But they had what? The word. All they had to do was hold their position. Jesus said it. That settles it. I don't care what comes up in the middle of this thing. I'm going to make it to the other side. But just like them crying out in the boat, oh, Lord. How can you sleep, Jesus? How can you do this? Don't you care that we're going to die? People the same way. Y'all shaking your head, but you know we do the same thing to Jesus. Giving up my word that they're going to make it over. But the storm arose. Situations they're confronted with. Things that you didn't count on showing up. The storm arose right in the middle. But you got the word from God. You got the word from God. God just needs you to hold your position. Stand your ground against the onslaughts of the enemy. Stand your ground. How many people know in 2016 you better be standing your ground? Because now it's like anything is everything. Anything you want to do is fine. You know, we got people want to be with little kids. We got man want to be with man and woman want to be with woman. Then we got this man want to be with cat and dog. And oh, it's, I mean, the world is so tore up and confused right now. So it's like anything goes. So you got to be the one to stand firm and hold on to what you believe about God. Because anything goes now. Anything goes, I'm telling you. Anything, whatever you can imagine, it'll go. Whatever you see, it'll, it'll go. I want to be a, I want to be a man, but you you a woman. I want to be a woman, but you a man. But I feel anything goes. Now now they want to have a Satan's club in school. I, anything goes now. Anything goes. After school program called Satan. Friends of Satan or Satan somebody. Now we're living in a time where anything goes, and we are the only examples in the world. Isn't that something? We're the only light that somebody will ever see in a dark world such as this. Glory to God. So God needs us to stand fixed and firm on the word and to not let go. Glory to God. Are y'all hearing me tonight? The Bible says this in the book of 2 Corinthians. It talks about in, in chapter 10. For the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down the stronghold. And then it talks about casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And then it says bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Whose job is that? It's my job to take authority over my thought life and, and, and any thoughts that don't line up with the word of God I need to cast them down. So stuff start running through my mind I need to cast them down. Anything that brings about doubt and unbelief I need to cast it down. Glory to God. Because it's trying to exalt itself against the knowledge or the word of God or what God has spoken to your life. Glory to God. Anything that comes against what he said, you won't be healed, cast it down. Anything that comes against his word and says that God will not provide for you, cast it down. Come on, somebody. We serve the God of the impossible. He said what is impossible with man is possible with God. Remember, he told Sarah, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Glory to God. See, some people have been stuck in places 
Glory to God. But now it's time for our breakout year. Glory to God. Our breakout season. Glory to God. To move out into what God has called us to do. Glory to God. God is asking somebody in here to stand your ground tonight. Stand strong on his word. Stand fixed on his word. And to not let go. Glory to God. That's the God that we serve. Let's go to Psalm 78. I know they like this woman keep going back and forth. But that's okay. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Too many people got quit. In a system, we got to get quit out of us. Glory to God. I'm not going to make it. I'm going to give up. Doesn't matter anymore. I haven't seen it. It's been too long. Glory to God. Get that out of your system tonight. God needs you to stand. Stand your ground. Hold your position. I keep hearing him say, hold your position. Glory to God. You're going to see God do the miraculous in your life. But you got to hold your position. You will see God turn that thing around, but you got to hold your position. You'll see God open the door, but you got to hold your position. Glory to God. Psalm 78. Now, this, um, this, it's talking about uh, Psalm 78 speaks of a people who gave up in the midst of a battle, even though they were equipped, even though they were armed, even though they were skilled in these battles. These people gave up right in the midst of it. So let's look at verse number eight. It says, and might not be as their fathers. That's what the King James says. So God is telling us, don't be like the people he's about to describe. A stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their hearts aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. These people didn't stand on the word. They did not stand on the word. Look at verse number nine. It says the children of Ephraim being armed and carrying bows turned back in the day of battle. Did you hear that? These people were skilled in archery. They were skilled in their trade, in their expertise. But the Bible lets us know that they turn back in the day of battle. And this is just the same as many Christians. And when trouble comes, a lot of people turn back. They give up. They throw up the white flag. They throw up their hands. And they said, I'm giving up. Glory to God. But God's saying he needs you to stand on his word. Stand your ground. He keeps saying, hold your position. We are living in evil days. Some evil days, glory to God. You got to stand your ground. You got to hold your position. While you're sitting at home, the enemy's making suggestions. <laughs> when you wake up in the morning, he's making suggestions. God said he needs you to hold your ground. To hold your, stand your ground and to hold your position. And to not let go. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I was just thinking about um, when I went to Grenada. I told y'all it, 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 the story. It, it was like a three-year thing. God spoke it. And then it seemed like the door opened. But it seemed, and then the door closed again. And then finally this year, the door opened. And it opened wide. And even the day that I was to go, I was sitting at home. And the enemy kept make, making suggestions like, you know, if I was you, I wouldn't get on that plane. I know the difference between something coming in my head and something coming in my heart. And um, he was like, I wouldn't get on that plane. I wouldn't get on that plane. And I, I thought about it for a minute. And I said, no, God promised me this. I don't know what's waiting for me on the other side. I don't know what, what, what God has over there or who needs to hear a word on the other side. I just need a prayer on the other side. So I, I got my emotions and everything in line because I was like, I ain't seen Sierra in a while. and I'm finna leave my boo and all that kind of stuff. You know how your body, your, your, your emotion, you know women, our emotions be tripping and stuff like that. Got on a plane, finally made it over there after we, I told people we went. I know Liat is a plane and it's a trip. That ride, we went up, came down, went up. Every 30 minutes we was going up and down, up and down, up and down. I touched almost every island in the Caribbean in one day. I'd have been to Antigua, Dominica. <laughs> I went to St. Martin. Glory to God. On the way back, I hit St. Kitts. Uh, glory to God. I mean, almost every island I've been to in one day. Glory to God. Finally hit the island. When we got up to go to the church the next day where we were doing a vacation Bible school and ministering and stuff like that, you should have seen the kids that came into the door. When we were making our way from the hotel to the um, bus station where we, you know, we were catching a public transportation and stuff, 
in the middle of the city, Grenada, near the bus station. And it, it is tons of activity, tons of people moving and going forward. And my heart just lit up. And I was like, God, I said, boy, if pastor came in, saw these people, we have all of them. We tear this place up because I'm thinking about swatting all that. Because the people moving and it, it's just like they come here, they get off one bus, they stay and they wait for another. I mean, it was constant people in this place. So we made our way to the church and everything. The kids start showing up and I'm telling you, my heart just went out to them. Because, you know, we, God really dealt with me. It's like we look at things in such a different way. You know, we in, they called us the people from America. I was the only continental, but they call, call even the people, other people that travel, the people from America. They say, the people from America is here. The people from America is here. And when them kids start showing up, I'm telling you, my heart just went out to them. Because it's like the little stuff that I complain about. I, want to, I see this new shoe or I want this and that. Some of them didn't even have some of that. And God just really spoke to my heart. It's like, you know, seeing things from a different perspective. Looking at people who, who, who I mean, they're, they're getting the word, but they don't get it like us. You know how we get it and we're able to apply it and all that? They ain't got it like that. They got the word and they still singing hymnals and all that kind of stuff. And God just quickened me. This is why God gave pastor the vision to go. This is why God put, put him here to touch the Caribbean. Because everybody don't got it like you. People need to know that God will supply. I mean, we took the kids on a little trip, and they, they, their parents were like, well, they can't go because they don't have the money. And they can't go because they don't have the money. We paid for all of them to go because we wanted them to have the opportunity to experience something different. And come out, come out of the I, – I still don't understand why people call these things villages. I don't, and they got real houses and stuff like that. I don't – but I'm a continental. Okay. <laughs> I, I just don't under, they say in the village, but when I went through the village, I'm looking, you know, I'm looking different. I'm like some of the people in the States that ask me, do y'all still ride horses? You know, so when I got there and, and they talking about the village, but they had houses, but you know, of course, some not like ours and stuff like that. But God just really opened my heart why we need to, not only for ourselves, but teach people to stand on this word. That God is God, he is a God that is able to take them out of the situation that they're in. No matter how pole you may be and how much you are lacking, his word has power to change your circumstances. I mean, even like I said for me, when I came here, my money ran out. I didn't have any more. I couldn't even find a job. I remember one day I had a job interview, Red Hook. Now, I was like, I was used to walking from Scott Free all the way down to the church and, and it's fancy. So I'm like, well, maybe I could walk. Not knowing how far Red Hook was. Remember, I'm a continental. Okay. <laughs> so it was like, they was like, somebody told me at early on the prayer. They said, you, you, you don't know where Red, you know, Red Hook is far. I said, okay. So I left it alone. And I had to go to God in prayer because I didn't even have the money to get out to Red Hook for the job. And somebody, not the same person, while I was praying on my face, I'm like, well, God, you opened the door for the job, but I can't even get to the job because I'm thinking it's in walking distance. God moved on somebody's heart to give me a 20 so I can catch the safari. I hadn't even caught the safari because, I, I mean, I knew nothing. And God just showed me the way he provided all, all that stuff for me. So I'm thinking about them same people who had nothing and how the word worked in my life and how the word changed my circumstances and how God opened the door for me to get a, 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 a job. And then remember, I was walking for a long time and then God gave me that little red car. I literally remember the day that I got my red car. And I remember Lily was in, I think she was in the prayer room with us. We was praying or something. We had afternoon prayer or something. And I was shouting the victory for my red car. When Lily came out and saw that car, because they thought it was the other car. See, it was two cars out there. There was a new one and my red one. And I was rejoicing like I had the new one. When in fact, I had the red one. Yeah, it wasn't even brand new second hand. It was about 10th hand. To the 10th power, glory to God. But, that, but faith provides. Faith opened doors. Faith provided, glory to God. Me exercising and, and using faith or using the word of God and the principles in the word of God opened doors for me in my life, changed circumstances for me in my life. So God saying them same people that I'm looking at, no need to feel sorry, give them the word. 
Teach them how to stand on the word. Let them see for themselves that God provides, that God makes a way. Doesn't he tell us in Matthew 6 to take no thought for your life saying what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, and what you're going to wear? It says your heavenly father knows you have needs of these things. He said, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then he said all that other stuff going to be added unto you. When people get a hold of the word, their life changes. Anybody can account for that in here. I know this ain't my normal flow, but my heart is full right now. But um, your life changes. So God is saying, show them the word. Show them what he can do through the word. When you get a hold of the word and the word becomes life to you, there is nothing impossible for God to do in your life. Glory to God. So now my, my, my heart is open and, and, and I mean, my heart is really open. Y'all can tell because I ain't got over it yet. Glory to God. But just the things that God allowed me to see. And he's saying other people need to know. It reminds me of the vision that um, when Bishop, we were in Southfield, Michigan. And Bishop, uh, before he started going out to the other churches, first church he went to was the Atlanta church and everything. But God gave him a vision to go further than that. And one of the things that said in the vision that God gave him was to go to Africa. Then it said to go to the Caribbean. Now, this was before any of this stuff had manifested. All he had was the word. That's all he had was from God. And then he wrote it down. It says, write the vision and make it plain. That's all he had. And next thing I know, Bishop not only started going to Atlanta, he started going to Phoenix. Then he started going to these other places. And then God started open door. And then God told him to start sending out ministers. I remember he sent out um, uh, Bishop Davis. He sent them to Florida. And then I was there when he sent out Pastor and Minister Walker um, to come to the Caribbean and all that kind of stuff. All he had was the word. All he could do was confess the word. All he could do was stand on the word. Now, how many churches does the word of faith have throughout the globe? We in Brazil and Belgium and Russia and Africa. Come on, somebody. But all he started was, see, a lot of times we look at the after. But I saw the before when there was nothing but one church. Then there was a two church. Then there was a three church. Now we got churches throughout the world. Come on, somebody. But all he had was a word. And all Bishop did was stand on the word. God is not a respecter of person. God is asking me, I mean, he keeps giving me these examples. So you will see because there are people sitting right in here tonight. All you got is the word. What God said. And I'm telling you tonight. I mean, just, just as I'm standing here, I'm telling you tonight. Holding on, standing fixed on that word. You're going to see God do the miraculous glory to God. It's no longer going to be what you got on paper, what you got printed up, what you, the picture that you drew. You know, a lot of people do their vision boards and stuff like that. No longer is going to be just a picture or the image. You're going to see it in reality, glory to God. You're going to be able to walk into the house. You're going to be able to drive the car. You're going to be going inside to the, build, uh, to the business, glory to God. You're going to see all that stuff manifest in your life because you're standing your ground. You're holding your position and you will not let go that is just practical you know what I'm saying that is just, but I saw it with my own eyes and I know that God is able to do the same thing here in the Caribbean we started with St. John but remember how we used to pray for St. Croix and we called for all these other islands I'm telling you they hear and the doors are open the doors are open because we have been praying. We, the church is going to be 20 years, years old next year, glory to God. Do you think all that prayer power went to waste? No, the doors are open because people are crying out for the word. They want to hear the word. I remember when we went to Santo Domingo. Them people got lit up by the word that pastor was preaching. Even us going through the valley and, and I guess the village, ministering the word on the street. Lives were changed because of that. Y'all understand me? All pastor got is the word. All you got is the word. But he's holding fast to the word. And he ain't letting go. Glory to God. And God is asking you to do the same thing in your life. To hold fixed and firm on the word. And to not let go. To not let go. To not give up. To not cave in. To not quit. And then when you get off, get back on it. A lot of people get off and then they get con condemned. No, when you get off, you get back on the word. You get back on the word. You get back on the word. And it doesn't matter what it is. 
Doesn't matter what it is. Healing, provision, doesn't matter what it is. When you get off the word, you got to get back on the word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is saying, hold your position. There are a lot of people that have gotten off in position in here. A lot of people have gotten off on position. And they allow people to get them off. The words of people to move you off of what God said to you. Time to get it right with God. Time to repent. Let it go. And time to get back into position. A lot of people got off. A lot of people got off. But God is saying, get back into position. You heard him. That's the thing. That's what he's saying. You heard me. You heard me. And you heard me clear. And you acknowledge that you heard me by saying, yes, Lord. So now God is holding you accountable for that word that you have. Y'all hear me tonight. You said, he said, you acknowledge that you heard me by saying, yes, Lord. So now you are held accountable for that word. God said, get back on it. Don't let go. You're going to see God. Miracles, signs, wonders manifesting. Miracles, signs, and wonders manifesting. People getting back on the word of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I got some other stuff in my notes, but it just, right now, I'm just not hearing it. I'm not hearing it. I want everybody to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. I actually want you to go to God regarding what he has spoken to you regarding your own life. Whatever he said, don't allow people to get you off. Stand your ground and hold your position. I want you to go before God right where you're sitting tonight. You don't have to come down to the altar, none of that. But right where you're sitting tonight, I want you to go before the throne of God. And whatever God has spoken to you, if you've gotten off, let him know I've gotten off. But tonight you're making a commitment to go back on, to get back on, and to move out and to step out in what he's speaking. And guess what? The more you move, he reveals more. You take this next step, God's going to reveal more. You take another step, he's going to reveal more. You take another step, he's going to reveal more. That's how the plan, that's how it works. He doesn't unfold everything all at one time. So you take this opportunity to go to the throne of God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this opportunity, Lord God. Be in your presence tonight, Lord God, and to hear your word, Lord. Father, we just uh, openly uh, repent. And we just ask your forgiveness, Lord God, where we have gotten off concerning your word, no matter what it is. What you have spoken to our life, Lord God, your word is truth. It is truth. And you are God that cannot lie. So, Father, we grab hold of your word, Lord God. We stand fixed and firm, and we will not let go, Lord God. We're holding our position, and we are standing our ground, Lord God. And we thank you, Father God, that you will show up and you will show out in our lives like never before, Lord God. This is the time and this is a season you promised to break out year, Lord God. So I thank you. At this point, people have not been experiencing breakout in their lives, in any area of their lives. You making the commitment tonight, I'm telling you, you're going to see breakout in your life like never before. You've been off. You've been off the word. But God said, by you getting back on this word, you're going to see it. You're going to see it manifest in your life like never before. And then there were people in here who got little trinkles of things going on in their life. Little trinkle here, little trinkle there. Now you get ready for the diluge to come into your life. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you and I just praise you, Lord God. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. If anybody is sitting here tonight and they've never made Jesus the very Lord of their life, I just want to give you an opportunity tonight. The Bible says that we can know that we have eternal life and that life is in the Son. It says, he that have the Son 